Hey guys, how's it going and welcome to part 5 of the ultimate guide to Bloodborne, almost said Dark Souls 2. Yep, and today we are doing Hemwick. So if you just heard a really annoying noise, it was Tony moving the microphone, but yeah, we're doing Hemwick Charnel Lane today. So we're going to start off at Grand Cathedral because it's the closest to Hemwick and we're going to go to the right. Please stop moving the microphone because it's going to pick it up. Anyway, so something that I want to say about this area is if you're having trouble with Amelia, you can come to this area first before you defeat Amelia and beat the boss and get all the souls and level up from here and yeah. then do Amelia. That's what I would personally recommend. Um, I know that you can do Amelia beforehand, but Amelia can give some people a lot of issues, a lot of issues so you know, you can come here first if you so want because it, it doesn't change anything in terms of game progression. <clears throat> So what we're doing here is we're putting on Blood of Adela because we want to use that immediately. Like as soon as we need to heal, Blood of Adela is really good. Um, it actually heals you back to full, which is really fucking good. Like it gives you an initial burst of health, and then if the the HP regen process goes uninterrupted, it will heal you back up to full from what we can tell. So it's very good where you could use one of them instead of using like three blood vials to go back up to full health if you're in a safe area. Um, this section here, we do have a shield on, I just completely forgot. It's probably best to use your shield because there's a lot of guys with guns and it's a good way to mitigate the damage if you uh, if you like, miss time a roll or something like that. Yeah, you can fuck up pretty hard in this area because there's like three guys with guns in one area and they can just yeah. go bang and just kill you. So. I mean, you see what happens, I, I almost get completely shit upon by the three guys over at the over near the start of the area. So yeah, you, you definitely, you know, you want to be uh, wary of your surroundings. Another thing is that the dogs will be knocked back quite far if you shoot them with your gun. So, you know, like, they go, like, flying kind of thing. So it's a good way of, like, getting them off your ass. Yeah. Um, you, you know, while you're fighting them. So, you know, as you can see, there's, like, a lot of guys here. And It's, it's a really good place to get bullets, though, because every single one of these guys will drop you at least two or three bullets, which is fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, I mean, this would definitely um, be, like, the bullet farming area. Yeah, if you wanted just bullets, then this is where you go. But, uh, you know, hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult, you just need to be aware, like, everything is relatively simple aside from the bit that is coming up. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking around to make sure that I've not missed any items over in this side, but the, the items I'm looking for are over here. So this is what I'm talking about, where you can just get fucked up at random, like, boom, I'm almost dead right there. And then I found this cheeky little spot right here, you just gotta push right up against this gravestone and these guys can't hit you. So then you can just sort of use guerrilla tactics, run out and, you know, get one, then head back. Yeah and try not to get shot or jump into the fire like I just did there but this is a nice little stash for like uh, bone marrow and I think there's um, a blood pack up here as well yeah I think so so I'm just checking like checking this little part to see how close you can get in but you just need to walk straight into the corner and that will shield you really nicely from these guys so there's uh, bone ash, cold blood and cold blood and there's one more item in this section we haven't gotten yet it's near the exit so Put the bonfire to your back and just run straight down the centre path and it will take you towards Hemwick. This is like a sort of middle section. Um, if you're in this section, by the way, with more than 15 insight, you will start spawning the, these like weird fucking black creatures will spawn out of the ground and they're, they're really annoying. So there is actually an item up there behind that rock uh, that I was just at. I think it's a twin shard. Yeah, it was. Which is, it, this is the first time I even knew about it. Like, Yeah. But the good news is that the dogs are dropping a lot of blood shards as well. So see at the end of this area, um, I don't know if I might have cut it out, I can't remember, but um, I think we upgraded our sock lever to plus six by the end of this, but we then reconsidered maybe it would be better to just upgrade the ton the tonitress to plus five instead. Yeah, um, we feel that really you should just be upgrading one and then the other. Yeah, like now that you have the tonitress, you want to prioritise that over the saw cleaver. The cleaver is good, but the tonitress is just better for flat out damage when it comes to the later game bosses, other than Pearl, I guess, who would be strong to lightning. Yeah, and then really weak to the saw cleaver. Yeah, but they just flame on the saw cleaver and it's GG. Yeah, exactly. So this is the first lantern for Hemwick. Now this area isn't this area isn't too difficult. There's a couple of hard hitting enemies in this section. Um, so I don't think you guys are gonna have that much of a problem. As you can see with our saw cleaver at plus five right now, we're two shot and everything in this area. Yeah, and even before Amelia, you should still be two shot in these guys. I would yeah. I would say personally that this area overall is less hard than Amelia, especially the boss. Yeah, I, I would say though, don't come, don't like venture too far into this area unless you are like two shot in these guys, because yeah. you don't you don't want to leave them like always having that magic pixel of health where you can't really do anything. Because um, like if if you hit them twice, then that's great, but if they're not dead, then there's still there's still a problem. So this part here is 
uh, you're using this well, So if you've if you've already entered the Forbidden Woods, what happens is every single NPC that uh, every single one of these NPCs, like the Red Lantern Window NPCs, all of them turn into the same NPC who tries to give you the Tonsil Stone. So because we haven't been into the woods yet, that NPC doesn't do anything. But if you have been into the woods, you can speak to this NPC to get the Tonsil Stone instead of the one that we speak to in the Forbidden Woods. Yeah. So you can you can get the Tonsil Stone earlier. The Tonsil Stone only lets you go to the uh, the I was going to call it the Duke's Archives there. Essentially the Nightmare Frontier. Uh, yeah, unless you go to Nightmare Frontier and the first floor of the, what's it called? The library, lecture hall. The lecture hall. Okay, so pressing on anyway, uh, not only that, next to the, that, like, window, that's where the shortcut is. So yeah. we'll, we'll open up a shortcut that lets you run there and come back up to yeah, the Yeah, it's, it's an elevator. So... We're just dealing with these guys. The, the good thing about these guys is that not only are they really squishy, their attacks are pretty. They're, they're pretty easy to dodge. However, the ones with a hammer hit ridiculously hard. Yeah, so. and they have a shove attack as well. So if you get your back to gravity, you might want to be a little bit. You might want to be a little careful because they will. There is one in the level whose entire purpose is to knock you off of the roof to yeah. death. But it's funny because you can just roll into her and she's like bastard and uh -huh. stum stumbles. They just beat her down. There's another twin shard here. Two of them actually. So remember, um, twin shards are very useful at this stage of the game. And remember, every time you kill one of these big guys, if you have a lot of health vials, like if you've got like 18 or 19 vials on you, and you're missing even a little bit of health, just take the vial and pick up the item. The odds of that being a vial are really high. So it's, it's always good to have like max health and as many vials at your disposal whenever you get a chance to. And those guys are a really good chance to do that, because as I said, the chances of them dropping vials are really high. Yeah, so you can plunge attack that one enemy there and just... Mm -hmm. Kill that one outright. Um, so now we're coming up to a hell of a lot of these fucking annoying crows. I really can't stand these guys. And they're, they're kind of tough to see because of all the, the tall grass and then being like a really dark colour of camouflage really well. So I'm just going to like abuse the environment so they can't hit me and then beat them down with an extended sock lever because it's awesome. It's so good. It's good. The vertical attacks are pretty yeah. decent. So this is the elevator Tony was talking about. This goes down, and that takes you back to that lantern, uh, that that window with the uh, the lantern outside that I was talking about, where they can give you the tonsil stone. Yeah, yeah. Now, right, this NPC, well, enemy, you really want to be careful yeah. of because if just you're... roll past her, just roll past her. I tried to see if it was qu if uh, you could be quick enough to run round the corner and get the shot off. I wasn't quick enough that time, but just roll past her. Basically, the important thing is just to be like know that she's there and be wary because if she ta if she takes you off guard, you're getting launched off edge. Simple as that. Yeah, she has a running attack with a shove where if it hits you once, um, you you get knocked back quite a good distance. Sometimes it hits you two times as well, which means that you're definitely going off the uh, off the off the side of the cliff. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you pick up the yeah? You picked up the bone marrow ash that's behind, are you? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. Up, yeah. Okay. So. I'm not missing any health, so I'm just going to pick these up. So if I had 19 vials on me and I was missing health, that would have been good because I could have went down 18 vials, be at full health, picked up that guy's vials, and that would put me at 20 with full health again. So I'd be like back to square one, essentially. Yeah. So I get quite lucky here in the fact that the dog gets stuck behind the uh, the woodwork of the stable, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's so, a stable. Some sort of barn. Um, oh yeah, there's a wandering nightmare up here, guys, so keep your eyes peeled. He's kind of tough to see. So yeah, and you need to like head across the rafters he's as like well. Right, he's like right in front of me, like right there, where where my guy's head is. Well, can you like technically see it? Uh, I I couldn't. Like there. Ah yeah yeah. <laughs> it's like it's so tough to see because it's so dark. And there you go, some more twin shards. So this is yeah. this is good because it means we'll be upgrading our weapons pretty well. Oh yeah, definitely. I think by the end of the forest, we should have both of our weapons at a minimum of plus six because the forest is a very good source for twin shards too. Um, I forgot how to platform. Yeah. Thank so, God this wasn't the painted worm because I'd be dead. So don't be a dick, essentially. Yeah. Uh, make sure your hands work the way you want your hands to work. <laughs> uh, that's that's our MLG advice for this episode. Yeah, being Gary, just don't get hit. Yeah. That, 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 yeah. Right, let's go with that. So anyway. this this little um, this little platform here where the uh, the madman's knowledge is that's where the bell ringing woman will spawn if you try to look for co-op. Um, you need to kill her so that she won't bring an invader into your world while you're co-oping essentially. So that's where she will spawn if you wanna, if you don't want to be invaded while you co-op because Bloodborne thinks that's okay. Yeah, cause Bloodborne really fucked up the PvE. Bloodborne hates PvP. PvP. Except Bloodborne like, hates it. Anyway, so this is the on. ditch. So just roll into her and it staggers her, but 
She, her, her, like, the first thing she does is, like, run out and try and, like, shove you with a hammer off the, uh, uh I suppose it's a mallet, um, off the rooftops here, which is kind of, a uh, kind of inconvenient. Yeah, so, I mean, the lesson to be learned here is just don't trust women. You read that off of the comments yeah, section that <laughs> video, didn't you? <laughs> wow. Wow. Just... No shame. <laughs> just stealing someone else's joke. Well, it was relevant. <laughs> So there's, there's quite a few guys up here, so just take your time and you'll be able to like, these guys are really easy to parry when they do that charge attack, like as soon as the elbow stops rising, just pull the trigger and that's you got it. I mean most of the charge animation itself is parryable by lots of things. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. They're still not as bad, not as bad as the guys with a lantern in Cathedral World. Oh, yeah. Those guys that you can parry as soon as they even blink at you. Pretty much. Just if they're in front of you, you can parry it. So there we go, like there was us shooting the dog and yeah. it getting knocked really far back. I did try to shoot the dog into the fire, like that was the original plan, <laughs> because that would have been fucking awesome. Evil. Well, I mean, it was. A, it's not evil, it's just effective, and so, I hate this one so much. This bastard keeps because throwing Molotovs at you. You need to hit her three times, which is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> she has slightly more health than the other one, so you have to hit her three times. So there's some more twin shards, which is good, and we're pressing on again. Yeah, we've picked up now, like eight or nine. Watch out, because there's a bitch behind the corner here, so just, again, once you know that she's there, she has an issue. Yeah, like, a lot of this section is, like, one-time-only tricks, sort of, they like, hidden enemies and shit like that. Yeah. There is one that took that took ages for me to figure out. Ages, and it's the guy, it's the, one of these guys who's, like, in at the chest, just up the hill. I had no idea where he was, and every time I went up to take on the three women, he'd just appear behind me. <laughs> and I was like, I killed you! Where are you coming from? Okay, so... Finally got him. This gate here opens up... I mean, essentially, this means it's now a straight run from the beginning lantern, just... Yeah. run up uh, so where you took on the first guy who like the first uh, giant guy who had like the brick yeah. and the bandages the ones who usually drop vials where you took him on that's that hill right there so next time if you do die and you have to run back through here you can run straight past the guy with the brick in his hand you can run straight past him on the other side of this gate and it even breaks the aggro uh, the aggro leash so that he won't actually pursue you through that gate now something we should probably mention here is when you get to Yusefka's clinic which we will cover in an episode um, yep. this little sort of the monolith thing on thing the to right. your right yeah. yeah that is where you come to go to the secret canehurst area yeah it's sort of like the painted world it's similar yeah. to the way they make you the painted world where you have to get something from another place and then come back now there's a lot of dogs here as you can see so be careful pungent blood yeah. cocktails are useful here i mean semi-useful it's, it's pungent blood cocktails it's it, it just makes the dogs more erratic but what it does though is that even though the dogs are now moving around a lot more, they're not moving around and trying to get you, which yeah. is a good thing. So if you can like find a way to time your attacks, I guess you may be able to take them out, but we had a pretty easy time right there. So yeah, once you have the Canehurst summons, you just come here and you'll get transported to Look well, at the arm on that bitch with these Molotovs. <laughs> I know, that's a man throw if I've ever seen one. She could be like a fucking pitcher for the Red Sox. Alright, like a... Red Sox is baseball, right? Probably. Olympic class shot putt. Um, um, pos I don't know. I'm, okay. I'm going to stick with my Red Sox reference. I think that's baseball. It has the highest chance of being baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's a, a rune which is Lake. Um, yeah, Lake's just a defensive boost rune. Is that the defensive one? Uh, yeah, all the Lake ones are defense boosts. Oh, okay. So they are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like Arcane Lake, Dissipating Lake, Great Lake, and all that sort of shit. So I'm just looking around up here in case there's any item that wasn't in the official guide. Uh, you know, just want to be thorough because we've found stuff that isn't in them before. Uh, not for Bloodborne, actually. Bloodborne's been completely thorough. It's the other guides which have had things missing. I think there was one in Bloodborne, wasn't there? Nope, none for Bloodborne. Huh. So the Bloodborne guide is actually very, very good. Like, well, I mean, they had German Spy and Epic Name on it, so I imagined it'd be like somewhat thorough. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, we really can't fault it. Yeah, it's just really good. It's really good. So this is the guy I was talking about, the one who always like snuck up behind me. If you go up that hill and try to fight the women that are up here, he'll come up behind you and try and beat you up. Yeah, so try not to let that happen, right? Um, so and try just under no circumstances to play as badly as I'm about to right now. So <laughs> as you can see, the hammer does quite a decent amount of damage to you. It's a mallet. Mallet, whatever. It's this the the Giga Mallet for Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. The <laughs> melee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one where it's oh shit, run. Yeah. Except the Hedahos won't fall off and then become a useless stick that traps you in the animation. <laughs> <laughs> so that guy dropped blood vials and this should be a blood gem, right? Uh, it is a blood gem, yeah. Tempering blood gem. 
It's triangle, so that's completely useless because sock lever is a half crescent and so is tonitrus. Yep. So that's great. So in this room here, we're going to hit a barrel and what that's going to do is make noise and a wandering <coughs> nightmare is going to fall out the ceiling, as you can see right now. That's that's one of the ways to get the uh, wandering nightmare to drop down is to make any sort of noise in this area. So breaking the barrel is pretty simple. Yeah, so you know that one could be quite easy to miss, but you obviously want to pick up all the wandering nightmares that you can. So at this point we have a lot of souls, so I'm asking Tony, should we just go for the boss or should I go back and level up? Feel free to do either one, we're just going to go straight in for the boss. Yeah, we're quite confident with it, but if you're, maybe, maybe again, if you're having trouble with Amelia and you've made it this far, we would recommend just Hunter's Mark back, level up and then just run back here. So um, if you don't have any, you should now be able to go to the Insight Store and buy Fire Paper if you've got the Radiant Sword Hunter's badge from the Upper Cathedral you'll be able to buy fire paper from the Insight store. That's what we recommend you spend your Insight on until you're able to buy bolt paper as well. Fire paper comes in handy in this because it gives you a much bigger damage bonus against the witches and what they summon. So we're just going to go in straight away and beat this guy down immediately. Um, remember as well to combo in your transform attacks when you're when you're going for like an attack combo with a saw cleaver. Um, R1, R1, L1, L1 is a really fast high damage combo. Um, so really I should have just taken the visceral but I'm trying to like chain backstab and I have I forgot the timing because I hadn't played Bloodborne bosses in so damn long. Yeah, so right, so the, the whole gimmick with this boss is that actually there's like two of them. Yeah. There's like two witches. Now really there is like a, a special technique where you keep one alive with a little bit of health and then you find the other one and then you get that one down to low health and then you just yeah. kill both of them quickly. Or it really doesn't particularly matter. Yes, if you kill one, what ends up happening is the other one revives the other one, which is but essentially why you want to keep one alive with a little bit of health so it doesn't get revived with more health. The thing is, though, when it does revive the other one, it's not actually that bad because the um, it, the, the other one doesn't come back with enough health to take like a full combo and a charge attack, so you can you kill it pretty damn quickly. Yeah. So another thing to do as well is try not to let these guys overwhelm you if there's like two or three of them maybe like back off a little bit and try and take down one of them try and reduce the amount of them so that you're free to go after the the actual boss something that can be said is when you do kill one of them it does appear that more of them spawn from what i can it's tell it's um, each witch is able to summon one every time the witch tra uh, teleports it can summon another one so you just want to like um, you can take these guys out one at a time if you want, but of course that lengthens the fight and then when the second witch appears you're taking down two at a time, which isn't exactly ideal either. So try and thin the herd and then finish the witches. Um, if these guys start showing up in numbers, then it might just be better to just kite them and take your time with the boss fight. Just keep running these guys around the long way so that you don't need to deal with them. So we weren't able to find that other witch, so you just kill the first one regardless, yep, hoping so that it will then force the other one to spawn and appear. So now there's now like two of these suit guys in this area as well as the uh, the other witch. Now we want to try and kill the other witch very quickly. Um, I think we need to kill the first witch like two or three times in this uh, boss fight. Yeah, now rest assured that you don't need to kill one for the other one to appear. The other one does appear without you killing the first one. Yeah, we just, I just couldn't find it. Maybe yeah. I ran past it. I know I did run past one, the one. The reason why I ran past that one is because I knew that one was the one that I'd already beaten up. But as far as I'm aware, like she's, she does have a fixed spawn location as far as I know, I just can't remember where it is and her stupid fucking I'm leaving now move decided <laughs> to steal my backstab. I'm leaving now. Oh, what is that? Oh yeah, I remember what it is. What? Oh wait, no, no. What, what is the just I'm leaving now from? Like, there's like a thing. Just I'm leaving now and then, I, I don't know. I anyway, don't remember. so back to the boss. So, I mean, the boss is really simple. The boss does have, uh, like, you see me dodge it just a second ago. It was like this blue light that the boss fired towards me. That's almost That's certainly the, the worst attack that you can get, Ian. Because... No, it isn't. The AoE spam is the worst. Um, so, like, that trap, what that does is it immobilizes you the same way that the uh, brain uh, the brain suckers or the Cthulhu's, whatever you want to call them. This AoE, by the way, if she does that, just back off because they chain those AoEs over and over and over again if you're still in range of them. So just back off, let her teleport, and then just deal with her again. That's the immobilizer move that I was talking about. If they hit you with that, they will run up and try to grab you like the witches do in Hypogean Goal, where they try and like, it's either, it's either slit your throat or scoop your eyes out. I can't I think remember which one it is. Oh, it might, it might be eyes, but it looked to me like she's trying to yank teeth. Oh. Uh, but it's probably eyes. I mean, it's probably eyes, considering like the entire thing about Bloodborne is like eyes and shit like that. Yeah. So, yeah, let's just, so, just avoid that. As you can see, the, there is two witches alive yep. at, this, at this particular point. 
Um, if, you, if you obviously you've beaten one up, you look about and find the other one that hasn't been beaten up, as in has no blood or whatever on it, and then you just beat her up until that one has a lot, like a small amount of health. Because I mean, we've not really demonstrated that particularly well, but as you can see, what we have demonstrated is that the boss is actually incredibly easy. Yeah, like the boss, like, there was only like maybe one moment where the boss had me in a bit of trouble, and that was because there was the fucking suit thing next to it as well. Yeah. So now, now that we've beaten the boss, we're going to go. There's a door in the boss room near the lantern. Um, that has a hunter in it. It gives you the workshop, the rune workshop tool, or the work, hunter's workshop rune. Yeah, rune workshop tool. That lets you apply. See, like the rune that we picked up, like lake and the uh, communion and stuff like that. Things we already picked up. That lets us equip those onto our character, sort of like ring slots from uh, Dark Souls Two, I guess, because there is four of them. Yeah. Um, the fourth one, of course, is purely for Covenant. So this is us doing it now. Yeah. So you go to the workshop table. It's it's just left of the uh, of the upgrade table. Uh, back in the the dream, and you can just put on whatever runes you feel are necessary. Yeah. So we're going to put on the moon rune. We're going to wear that for the entire playthrough, by the way, because the moon rune is just constantly giving us more and more echoes, which is great. And now we're going to level up, and it's just endurance to twenty five, then dump health up to forty, and then we're going to go into strength for the cannon yeah. afterwards as well. But that's about it for this video, guys. Um, Hemlock is a pretty quick and easy area. Yeah. Um, we definitely got every item. I'm 100% sure of that. So we hope you guys have enjoyed this sort of tutorial walkthrough sort of deal. Yeah. Um, so the next part shall be the Forbidden Woods. Yeah, Forbidden Woods. That's going to be uh, that's a tough one. There are over 70 items in the Forbidden Woods. Yeah. So and that'll be the <laughs> that'll be the hump. So yeah, that 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 took a lot of time to record. So we hope you guys appreciate this one. And uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.